Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the topic of bare spaces. So bare spaces is a weird definition, but um, it will get it will get useful. Okay, so we're gonna prove the bare category theorem, and it has a very important application, which is called the uniform boundedness principle. That has uh, uh, I mean that appears in functional analysis. So before that, let's uh, get some get to I mean get to know some uh, definition notations. All right. So recall that the interior of A is the union of all open sets that is contained in A. Okay. So when we say a set has an empty interior, it says that the interior of the set is equal to the empty set. So what observations we can make from this definition? So first, we know that for any x and a, x is not in the interior of a, right? So this means that if you're not in the interior of a, then for any open set in the space that contains x, right, we have the open set in a, open set, the u open set is not a subset of a, so u deleted a is not empty right so we pick another x prime that is in u not a or u minus a but i prefer to write this in this notation so we can pick element x prime that is in u but not in a right which means that x is in the limit point of the complement of a okay this is a, this is a a little jump here but you just take a look right so for we pick any neighborhood of x we pick any neighborhood of x right this neighborhood right intersects um the complement of a at a point x prime where x prime x prime is not an a right which means that x is in the limit point the set of limit points of the complement of a Right, since x is not in this. So, which means that for any x and a, we have x is in the limit point of complement, which means that a is a subset of a c prime. And also conversely, if we have this condition, suppose for a contradiction that the interior of a is not equal to the open set. Okay, suppose the interior of a is not equal to open set, then, which means that there exists an open set U that is contained in A such that U is not empty, right? So for X not and U, U is not empty, so we can pick an empty set. I mean, U is not empty, so we can pick an element from U, right? So the neighborhood U of X not is disjoint with a complement because U is contained in A, right? So for this point X not, we have found a neighborhood that is disjoint with a complement, which means that you are not in the limit point set of a complement, right? So we pick an element x that is an a, but x is not an a c prime. But we're given that a is a subset of a c prime, which is a contradiction. The contradiction arises under the condition that interior of a is not empty right so interior of a must be empty okay so here's an equivalence characterization of um empty interior and note that the complement of a is dense in x if and only if we have a c bar is equal to x but a c bar by definition not not by definition is by a proposition but some book defined this as a as a definition, but anyways, AC bar is equal to AC union with AC prime, right? By right. So AC union with AC prime is equal to X. This is this is on if and only if we have this. Right. So here I give I have given my um reasoning. Right. So for here, if we have this, note that A is subset of X, 
right? As you go to this. So A is a subset of this. But A and A complement are are disjoint. So A must be the subset of this, right? Which gives this. And if we're given this, note that A complement union with A should give you X, right? Right? But A is a subset of this, right? So X is a subset of AC union with this. But we also have this, right? So trivially, we have this, okay? So we're done. So those are some notes on empty interior. So example, the rational numbers have has empty interior as a subset of the reals. Why? Because the closure of irrationals is equal to the reals, right? The, the closure of irrationals is equal to the reals. You could think about it, right? Because, well, any real number, any real number, any real number, you, you just make an arbitrary neighborhood, there must be an irrational point contained in a neighborhood, right? So I think that should be easy to see. Right. And the closed interval from 0 to 1 does not have the interior interior because the open interval 0 to 1 is the interior of this thing. Right? So here's a definition that X is a bare space if a bare space has a condition that given any countable collection of closed set each has empty interior the union still has empty interior. So the empty interior condition, is, it is closed under countable union, okay? Each of them are closed. They must be closed set to have, it, and also empty interior, okay? They should be closed set. So here example, um, just one example is that the rationals is not a bare space. Okay, the rational, I mean the topology on rational on itself, not viewing as a subset of our, but anyways, the rational is not a bare space because for any point, any single point, it is closed in Q, right? Any single point is closed in Q and they have empty interior. But their union is equal to Q, but Q has not empty interior because by to the meaning of topology should means that um, the the space itself is open. Right? So Q is not a empty interior. So here gives a lemma is that the the characterization of bare space is that X is a bare space if only if so here's the open definition, open version. Is that any countable collection of open sets, each which is dense, then there count uh wait. Then their intersection is also dense in X. Okay. Their countable intersection is also dense in X. Okay? So here, I mean, as stated in the book, it says that we're just using these two remarks, okay? So it is, it is written as follows. You could just pause and take a look if you want, because they're, it's just by De Morgan's law and definition, so I just skip it. So here comes the important theorem. It's called the bare category theorem. Is that compact Hausdorff space and complete metric spaces are bare spaces, okay? So they belong to... They belong to the class of fair space. So the proof is that well for any countable closed sets with empty interior, we want to show that this what we want to show that is their countable union this also has empty interior. Okay? So which means that for any non-empty open sets, we want that it is not a subset of the union which means that we need to find a point that is not in the union, okay? So for any 
book in the next, we need to find a point that is in U naught but not in the union. So let's just start. Construct our. Let's just con do some construction. So consider A1. Because A1 does not contain U naught, right? So we pick a point Y that is in U naught but not in AI. A1. Why A1 does not contain U naught? Because if A1 contains U naught, then U naught is contained in the union of all A's, which is a contradiction. So A1 does not contain U naught. We pick Y in U naught but not in A1. Well, we know that X is compact Hausdorff implies X is normal. Also, matrizable spaces are also normal. Okay, so we know that X is normal. As A1 is closed, right, Y is not an A1. Remember our characterization of regular space. I mean, normal spaces are regular spaces, right? So, so first we pick UV, disjoint neighborhood of Y and A1. Okay, so we first we pick disjoint neighborhood of Y and A1. Now, notice we, we have Y is in U0, right? So U is also a neighborhood of Y. Right? So U intersect with U naught is again a neighborhood of Y because the finite intersection of open sets are open. And U intersect U naught except V should be empty. Right? Now we pick U1, a neighborhood of Y, such that U1 bar, the closure of U1, it is contained in the neighborhood, right? It's kind of U naught. So we can we can do this because uh, x is regular. U bar intersect a one, their intersection belongs to this set, right? Because a one is a subset of v. Right, v is the neighborhood of a one, an open set containing a one. But u, we have this, so which which gives that we have this, but this should be z empty set. Right, so this is empty, which means that we have these two conditions. Now, if x is metric space, we just made the diameter is less than one. Okay, so, well, if you if you don't like the diameter definition, if you don't see why we can make this true, you just consider well if we have y right, and we have um a neighborhood, right, a neighborhood u one, u one. Because U1 is open, so we can find a ball that is in Y and, and we can find a ball. We just make the radius of this ball is less than 1. Okay, so if this makes you feel better, just take it. Right? I mean, it, we can always make this true. Right? We, just make, we, we can just say that, oh, the U1 is a ball. Right? It's a ball. It's a, so anyways, so in general, we are, we're inductively constructing the open sets. So in general, given u n minus one, we pick y that is in u n minus one, but not in a n, because a n does not contain u n minus one. If it does, we get a contradiction, okay? and we again we just, we just, we just uh, we just mock what we've been doing, or we just mock. So again, we can pick a closed. I mean, we can pick a neighborhood u n of y such that the closure is in the in the string with a n. And it's containing u n as one, but more. Ever, we want the diameter of u n is less than one over n. Okay, when the diameter of u n is less than one over n, if x is a metric space, so you you can see that we're we we want to make this like we want this go to zero in some sense, right? So if we can show that, if we have this. If we have this, which means that for any x in this, we have x is in u naught, right? First, we have x in u naught. Also, for any n, x is in the closure of u n, and but the closure of u n and a n are disjoint, right? The closure of u n and a n are disjoint, which means that x is not in a n, which means that x is not in the uh, union of an, right?
What did you just say, like, X and U, U2, right? X and U2, and U2 intersect with A2 is empty, so X is not an A2, right? So X is not a union of AN, right? So we have find a point X, right? The final point X, and that is in U naught, but not in the union. So we're done. Okay, so we only need to show this. Could just erase this, right? We only need this. This is the only thing you know. Okay, remember to show this if X is compact Hausdorff, we just consider the chain, a nested sequence of uh, closed sets. Each is non empty. So the finite intersection property is satisfied because X is compact, so their intersection must be non-empty. Now, if X is complete, well, for each U bar N, we pick an X N, so X N, X M is in C N for N large. So X N is a Cauchy, right, since the diameter goes to zero. So here we used, here we, we use this to find a Cauchy sequence and X is complete, so it converges. So xk to xk plus 1 converges to x for any k, right? So x is in the closure of u n bar for each n. So x must be in the intersection. So here we're done, the Bayer category theorem. So here's an important application of the Bayer category theorem. It's the, called the uniform boundedness principle. So I've been I've been mentioning about this at the beginning. So let's just see the statements. Is that it states that for any complete metric space, and we consider a non-empty subset of the continuous function space from X to R. Suppose that it is pointwise bounded. So for each A and X, this set F A is bounded. <coughs> then, then we have there exists a un open set and x such that it is uniformly bounded. So, right, given pointwise bounded, if it's pointwise bounded and it's complete, then, then we have uniform boundedness principle. Yeah? So here's the proof. The proof is really neat. So we just defined the set AMF to be the set in x such that fx is less than or equal to m with the, I mean, their, their absolute value or their norm, okay? We see that this is by the definition of this, right? Right, yes. This is a set, the closed ball centered at zero with radius m, which is closed because f is continuous. So the inverse image of a closed set, it is, which is closed. We consider a m, to be this intersection. It is arbitrary intersection, so it is oh, again closed. Since for any x there is m such that we have so we have pointwise bounded, right? For any x for any x we can pick we can pick it m, yeah, such that we have this for any f. So we're given the pointwise bounded principle. Well, from here, we see that for any x, we have this, which means that x is in a m, right? So x is in the union of all a m, yeah. But x complete, so x is a bare space. So here we use the pair, bare category theorem. X is complete, so X is bare. But if each AM has empty interior, then so does their countable union, which means so does X. X has empty interior. But this is obviously a contradiction because the space itself is open, right? So which means that there exists an AN such that interior is non-empty. So we let U be the non-empty open set in their AN. For any X and U, we have X is an AN. Right, because U is a subset of AN. 
right? It's a union of subsets of an, which is again a subset of an. So x is in u, x is in an. x is in an means that it is uniformly bounded. Okay, so this summarizes the the content for this lecture. I'll see you guys next time.